Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on sexual reproduction in plants. So let us quickly look at some of the questions to see if you have really understood it. So question number one. Name the parts of an angiosperm flower in which development of male and female gametophyte take place. So first of all, which is the male gametophyte? So let us first talk about the male part. So male gametophyte is what? It is pollen grain. Right? So where is the pollen grain formed? So pollen grain is formed inside microsporangia. And where is microsporangia located? So microsporangia is located inside the anther. And where is anther? Anther is a part of the stamen of the flower. Right? And the stamen is a part of the flower. It is a part of the androsium world of the flower. So this is where male gamete development take place. So this is the flower and this is the anther. So inside this anther you have the microsporangial here. 1, 2, 3, 4. They are the pollen sacs or microsporangia. Similarly, the female gametophyte. Female gametophyte is nothing but the embryo sac. And where is the embryo sac formed? The embryo sac is formed inside the new cellus. And where is the new cellus? It is inside the ovule or the megasporangia, whatever you call it. Ovule or megasporangia. And where is ovule? Ovule is inside the ovary. And where is the ovary? Ovary is a part of the carpel, that is the swollen base of the carpel. And carpel is a part of the flower. So if you look at the female reproductive part, this is the ovary. Inside the ovary you have the ovule and inside the ovule you have the embryo sac. Question number two. Differentiate between microsporogenesis and megasporogenesis. So let us quickly differentiate. Microsporogenesis obviously is the formation of microspore. So here microspore tetrads, that is four microspores are formed from microspore mother cell. And here megaspore tetrads are formed from megaspore mother cell. Microsporogenesis, it happens in the male reproductive organ of the flower. That is, it happens inside the pollen sac of anther. Whereas megasporogenesis happens in the female part, that is inside the ovule. Now, which type of cell division occurs during these events? Now, during these events, microspores and megaspores are formed, which are haploid. And the starting material, that is the megaspore mother cell, is a diploid. So, from diploid to haploid. So, that means, me so that means meiosis has to take place. So, meiotic division takes place during these events. Then, the structures formed at the end of these events. The structures which are formed are microspore tetrads during microsporogenesis and megaspore tetrads during megasporogenesis. Question number 3. Arrange the following terms in the correct development sequence. Like whichever is uh, developed first, that should come first and whichever is developed later should come later. So here you have pollen grain, sporogenous tissue, microspore tetrad, pollen mother cell, male gametes. So the last thing that will be formed is the male gametes because it shows all those parts which participate in the male gametogenesis. So if the story starts from the sporogenous tissue which is located at the center of each sporangium. So the first thing that will come is the sporogenous tissue. Then inside the sporogenous tissue, the, in fact the cells of the sporogenous tissue will differentiate to form a mother cell which is again going to be diploid. Then this pollen mother cell will undergo meiosis and it will form microspore tetrads. That is four haploid microspores will be formed. Now these microspores will later develop into pollen grains which are the male gametophyte. And then these pollen grains will give rise to the male gametes. So this is the right sequence. So as you can see here. Question number four. What are chasmogamous flowers? Can cross-pollination occur in thistogamous flowers? Give reasons for your answer. We discussed about chasmogamous and thistogamous flowers. Let us quickly see what are they. 
Casmocamus flowers are those which have exposed anther and stigma. So that means the flower is wide open, so the anthers are also exposed and the stigma is also exposed. Both of them are exposed. Christocamus flowers are closed flowers. So when they are closed, what will happen? The anther, let us suppose if this is anther, let us suppose this is a closed flower. Somewhat like this, the flower is closed. So these are the anthers and this is the stigma. So if you see the anther and stigma are going to be lying very close to each other. And examples of such plants are viola and polygala. Whereas in case of open flowers, the anthers and stigma are a little far away from each other but they are all exposed. Now the question is, can cross-pollination occur in clistogamous flowers? Now in clistogamous flowers, the flowers are always closed. So the anthers and stigma are not even exposed. So if they are not exposed, how can cross-pollination occur? Because for pollination, for cross-pollination, you need pollinating agents to carry the pollen grains from anther of this flower to some other flower of some other plant. Now any pollinating agent will be able to carry the pollen grains only when the anthers are exposed. When they are lying inside the closed flower, there is no option that it can be carried away by pollinating agents. So there is no scope of cross-pollination in clistogamous flowers. So it cannot occur in clistogamous flowers. And moreover here the flower remains closed, the anther and stigma are very close to each other. So self-pollination takes place very easily. Because it is like almost close by, the pollen grains is very close to the stigma. So self-pollination takes place very easily. Next question, mention two strategies evolved to prevent self-pollination in flowers. Now it is always tried that self-pollination is prevented. Why? Because self-pollination doesn't give new varieties. It doesn't induce anything new. No new traits are introduced. So cross-pollination is more preferred. So what are the strategies that have been included for that? One thing is self-incompatibility. That is one option is if the stigma is not compatible with the pollen grains of the same flower, then it will reject the pollen grains. And once the pollen grains are rejected, please remember pollen pistil interaction. So if the stigma rejects the pollen grain, the fertilization will not happen because the pollen grains will not be able to germinate. They will not form the pollen tube. If pollen tube is not formed, pollen grains will not reach the uh, female gamete. So self-incompatibility is one technique. The other technique is protogyny or protoandry. What is this? This is a technique or this is a strategy where the male part and the female part do not mature at the same time. For example, the male part should be mature enough that they are able to produce pollen grains. Similarly, the female part should be matured enough that they are able to receive the pollen grain. Right? So both these things should happen in synchronization. Now, if the gynosium matures, the gynosium is the female part. So if the gynosium matures before androsium, what will happen? The stigma is ready to receive pollen grains, but the androsium is yet not matured. So pollen grains are yet not produced. So in that case, also fertilization will not happen. If it happens the other way around, that is the androsium is matured. So the pollen grains are getting produced, but the female part is not matured, so the stigma is not able to receive the pollen grains. So in that case also, fertilization will not be able to take place. So these are known as protogyny and protoandry. Andry is derived from androsium, gyny is derived from gynosium. So here pollen release and stigma receptivity has to be in synchronization. So if they are not in synchronization, then sexual self-pollination cannot take place. Because pollination is all about transferring the pollen grains from anther to stigma. So for that, first of all, the pollen grain has to be produced by anther. Secondly, the stigma has to receive the pollen grain. So if both these things will happen, only then pollination will be able to happen successfully. Right? So this is another strategy where the male part and the female part of the same flower, they are of the same flower or of the same plant, they are... Uh, not allowed to get matured together. So by the, this technique of protogyny or protoandry also self-pollination can be prevented. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, 
get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.